Hey everyone, Jordan here with 9to5toys, and today we're taking an interesting look at a way to use some different peripherals on different consoles. So the company we're looking at is Caliber Gaming, which is an extension of IO Gear. And as you can see here, we have their top of the line RGB mechanical keyboard, and we also have one of their top of the line mice, their MMO mouse with 12 programmable buttons and some really cool features. And then the really unique thing that we have is the Caliber Gaming Keymander 2, which is an adapter, which can let you use a mouse and keyboard on console. And it can also let you use different controllers between different consoles. So you can use a PS4 controller or Xbox One controller on your Nintendo Switch. So some really cool functionality built into this, a ton of customization you can do to make sure that everything is performing the way you want it. So let's dive in and check it out. Thanks for watching 9to5toys. Be sure to like, subscribe, and enable notifications with the bell icon so you don't miss any upcoming videos. So let's set the adapter aside and first take a look at the mouse and keyboard. So the mouse is their Momentum, which is spelled M-M-O, Momentum, because it's a 12-button MMO style mouse, and it has some great unique features built into it. Some of the quick specs here comes in at $60, 12 programmable buttons, and a 16,000 DPI sensor. Taking a look at those buttons, you can see on the side here, we have six different buttons, four along the bottom and two along the top, which have a pretty aggressive, very easy to feel design to them on there. On top of the mouse, we obviously have mouse one, mouse two, you can click the scroll wheel. You have the DPI buttons right here, which there is a little meter that changes with those different DPI settings. So you can get a quick visual glance at which setting you're on. And then there's also a third button up here on top next to mouse one, uh, which is pretty unique in my experience. I haven't really seen anything else like that. The switches feel good. Um, they're, they're plenty easy to press. I didn't have any problems using any actuation, actually using them in use. Uh, design on the mouse overall, as you can see, is a MMO style. So it has that kind of large finger rest on the side here. So. If you are using it with your ring finger sitting on the side, that's gonna be the most comfortable way to hold this mouse. Um, if you're like me, which I, might be a little bit weird, but you have your ring finger usually sitting on mouse two and your middle finger on the scroll wheel, then it does feel a little bit weird. But just like the Razer Nari with that little side rest on there, if you actually do have your ring finger sitting on the side, it is a very comfortable mouse. And I just plugged it into my laptop here so we can see some of the RGB. Uh, you can obviously see the scroll wheel lights up, and then it has this pretty awesome ring all the way around the uh, bottom and right side here, uh, which has some really brilliant uh, RGB. And then obviously the Caliber Gaming logo lights up as well. One thing that I really like is I really like that these, um, it does have the two, you know, side buttons that are up here near the top, near like mouse one, but then I do like the bottom row is quite a bit lower down here. Uh, usually I have my thumb pretty low on the mouse when I'm holding it, so that made that a lot easier to find than some other mice like the Nari Ultimate where those side buttons on some of the configurations are a little bit higher. And then within the Caliber app, it's easy to change any of those functionalities, uh, any, any button you want, uh, you can easily map within that, but then also change all that RGB so you can map it to whatever colors you want it to be. All right, so now let's move on to the keyboard, which is the Hiver, H-V-E-R, uh, Pro X keyboard. And they have a couple different variations of this keyboard, but the Pro X has optical switches in it. So uh, it's gonna be a little bit faster actuation, also should be a longer lifetime. Those are kind of the two uh, main benefits of optical switches that everybody pushes. And as you can see, it is it screams uh, gaming keyboard with this uh, aluminum body, which has a nice feel to it. It's got a brushed finish, which gives it a really nice look. Uh, up here on the top, you can see there's this huge nameplate that displays Caliber Gaming across, where they also still have the you know smaller discrete round logo down here. I'm not really sure why they didn't just leave it with that and cut off this large plate. Um, it seems pretty unnecessary to me. There are also these fins around here. You know, there's just this like total uh, shroud around here that isn't really necessary. But if you kind of like that, you know, maybe aircraft or uh, sport bike, motorcycle kind of, you know, excessive bodywork and flaring on the sides, then you might really enjoy that. Um, but for me personally, it's, it seems like a little bit much. One cool thing about these switches, uh, they are optical and optical switches aren't new. I have quite a few Huntsmen that have different optical switches in them, uh, which I absolutely love. But the Razer ones have either the clicky switch, uh, which is probably one of the best feeling switches in my opinion, I really enjoy it, or the linear switch, and they don't have any tactile options. So with the Caliber, uh, it's kind of like a tactile brown type switch, um, so it has a really satisfying feel to it. So it's not nearly as loud as what the clicky switches on the Razer are, the Huntsman, uh, but it also gives you some feedback when you're pressing it as well. Overall, I think that they're pretty light, uh, pretty easy to actuate, and we'll do a sound test here so you can hear how those sound.
build quality uh, it does have some flex on it as you know push down in different areas uh, but overall it's pretty thin relatively thin for you know a full-size rgb optical gaming keyboard but it could be even smaller and more discreet if they were to uh, reduce some of those um, flares around the outside here all right so now moving on to what i think is the star of the show at least the most unique um, is the keymander 2 adapter so i've just been testing it on an xbox one uh, but the cool thing about this is that you can do it on a playstation you can use it on a switch uh, there are just a lot of different things you can do to either swap controllers if you really enjoy a ps4 controller but want to play with your friends on xbox one or vice versa you want to use an xbox controller on your nintendo switch um, this will enable you to do that but the really big thing that they push and that we're testing out here is using a mouse and keyboard on the xbox one and while xbox one does allow mouse and keyboard on some titles uh, there's some games you can use it on and it works really well we did a review of the razer turret which is a keyboard and mouse that work together to do that and obviously you can use tons of other peripherals uh, not every single title is going to support a mouse and keyboard so what the Keymander 2 tries to do is get around that so that you can use a mouse and keyboard on any game. And one quick note here, I have to say this, uh, with great power comes great responsibility. Um, obviously using a mouse and keyboard on competitive FPS games where it's not allowed on console is going to be very frowned upon. In fact, PUBG for console has gone as far to say that if you are detected or if you're you know proven to be using any sort of adapter or unsupported hardware device uh, you could be permanently banned so keep that in mind and please uh, play responsibly i guess but that being said uh, even in caliber gaming's marketing material they show playing pubg and talk about playing pubg and there is even a profile specifically for pubg so yeah take that as you will um I haven't used it in any competitive uh, PUBG matches. I did load it into the training area, but yeah, keep that in mind. Uh, please be smart and respectful with this. Uh, but moving on from that disclaimer, let's actually talk about getting the Keymander 2 set up. So getting it set up is pretty simple and straightforward. Uh, Keymander is very clear about the exact pattern you need to plug everything in to make sure that the Keymander 2 detects the controller, the keyboard and the mouse in the correct order and can plan accordingly. So first you need to plug in a controller for the console that you're gaming on so that the Keymander knows what console that uh, program for. Then you can plug in a keyboard and then the mouse. Caliber also recommends supplying five volt power via the micro USB here um, for different keyboards that might take a little bit more power. And then for full use of what the Keymander 2 can do, you'll want to download the K2 app for Keymander 2 adapter, uh, which is something you can download to your smartphone, and that will connect to the Keymander 2 via Bluetooth, and then you can make a ton of changes to how everything is performing. So that's where you can search for and download different profiles for specific games. You can tweak all the different parameters, you know, you can set all the different macros and do just a ton of customization in there for how you want to play. And on top of that, there's also a forum for uh, Keymander users who talk about all their different settings for the different games. So if you're having trouble getting something dialed in, you can go there and check that out. So I just talked about being, you know, really careful with competitive FPS games, um, but the one that I really tested this on the most was Battlefield 4. Finding the right profile was really easy to download and install on the Keymander, get all that mapped out. And then uh, something you need to do is go into the settings of your game and like max out all the sensitivities on there. And then you can dial in the sensitivity um, with the Keymander app and then with your mouse as well. So once everything is like kind of dialed in, um, I found it to work really well. I felt like I could, you know, actually play similarly to how I would on a PC on the console. Um, everything was pretty responsive because it maps all the specific, you know, console controller buttons to different things on your keyboard. It can take a little bit of getting used to to navigating the menus, but once you get used to it, everything is super intuitive and works really well. Mouse movement was about what I expected, uh, but I did notice when aiming down sights, there were some small little like jitters in there um, that I wasn't inputting with the mouse, but I it must be some sort of calibration thing. Um, but other than that, I really felt like everything worked really well. Destiny 2, on the other hand, which is another game that I tried, um, that one was a little bit harder. I don't know if I just need to spend more time with it and get it dialed in, but the game itself uh, just didn't uh, act how I thought it would using a mouse and keyboard. I think that's probably because there's some pretty heavy like aim assist in Destiny 2 on console, and when you sprint, it like really slows down your turnings. There are just some different factors in there that make it feel not as natural using a mouse and keyboard on Destiny 2 on Xbox. 
That also might be because I've spent a ton of time playing Destiny and Destiny 2, so realizing that, you know, it's not performing quite how I expected it to might just be because I'm so used to using a controller. I spend most of my time gaming playing FPS games, so um, I don't really have a whole lot installed that's not an FPS, so to test the mouse and keyboard on something else, I looked back through my library and saw that I had Assassin's Creed Black Flag, which is an older game, um, but I just wanted to install that and see how it performed. And it worked really well. Playing the uh, beginning intro mission, uh, once I got the sensitivity dialed in, I could easily use the mouse and keyboard to perform all the different operations and move around the ship and to fire the cannons and sync everyone else and everything worked really well. So overall, um, while the aesthetics of the Caliber gaming stuff uh, is pretty far on the gamer side, um, with the super bright RGB and the kind of excessive shrouds over here on the keyboard, um, I really did find everything to work well. And they really are quite affordable too. The keyboard starts at $90 for a full size optical uh, switch, which is pretty good considering some of the prices on Razer stuff uh, when they're not on sale. And with the mouse, the Momentum Pro, uh, with the 12 customizable buttons, the bright RGB, and the very comfortable ergonomic design, I do think it's a good option for kind of like a budget MMO mouse. And with the Keymander 2, uh, it just kind of is what you make of it. Um, so you can use it for tons of different games, and I imagine down the line as well, this will be um, more capable with other consoles and other devices. I, I watched some videos where they're trying to adapt different fight sticks on this thing. So if you had one for PS4, but you have an Xbox now, you can you know swap that over to there. So I do think that there's gonna be a lot of development down the road. And the Keymander 2 comes in at $90. So you can spend a little bit on this adapter and then you can use a lot of different peripherals, a lot of different controllers on different devices. All right, and that'll wrap it up for our review of the Caliber Gaming Gear. This is one of their kits with their Momentum Pro, and we have the Hiver Pro X, and of course the Keymander 2. So what do you think of the Caliber Gaming mouse and keyboard kit? Let us know in the comments below. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing. This is Jordan with 9to5Toys.